I want to welcome each one of you, my brothers and sisters, for our weekly Bible study. This is a 12th Sabbath school lesson study. I welcome each one of you. God has been gracious to us. So we are here to study the Word of God. God has uh, been uh, so loving and kind to us and our families and uh, protecting us. Where uh, many people are in panic around the world and uh, all the major cities and towns even in the villages people are in panic but it's only God's grace which uh, is sustaining us so let's thank God and uh, open God's word I know some uh, some of you in uh, some safe places you are able to open the churches which means the congregation come together with some uh, restrictions so that we can uh, maintain some physical distance so uh, you're having that privilege to worship again back into the uh, in the sanctuary of God but I know uh, some of us still in some major cities uh, we don't have that privilege yet but by God's grace because of this technology we are uh, not missing uh, many things but we are able to be fed by God's word. We praise God for that. Let's pray, then we will open uh, God's word to study this week's lesson. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your abundant love and your goodness and your special grace which is covering us because of which we are safe and sound. We want to thank you, Lord. So we want to bring to your throne of grace to show mercy and to remove this uh, virus from all over the world and uh, bless all of our brothers and sisters who are able to gather in their sanctuaries to worship uh, in their uh, local church and also we want you to bless us so that uh, we can be fed by your word uh, by this technology so that uh, studying your word online we can also receive a rich blessing so that we will be filled by your word. Speak to us, Lord, especially how to deal with difficult uh, texts in the Bible. And bless each one of us who are watching this program so that it can be a blessing for us because I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, oh, this week's lesson Dealing with uh, difficult passages in the Bible. Dealing with difficult passages in the Bible. I know uh, there are uh, many uh, people who express when they read the Bible and say, Oh, some things I don't understand. Sure, it is there for every human being. Every human being. Nobody can boast and say, I know everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We cannot do that. We should not boast that way. Because we are limited. We are human beings. We have our human limitation. Sure. That's why I know some of us uh, who have been in uh, teaching the Word of God, which we call theology, for several years now. But still, there are things, there are texts uh, which we do not have proper understanding of such texts. We do have that uh, challenge from time to time because nobody can boast and say, I know everything. I can uh, explain everything. We should not do that as human beings. We are limited. But definitely we will try our level best to understand whichever is the difficult passage. What is difficult passage to you, it may not be difficult passage to someone else. What is difficult passage uh, to someone, it may not be difficult to you. So it uh, varies from people to people. Our memory text is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse Verse 15 and 16. Now, uh, surely uh, Peter is uh, presenting the long sufferingness of God. The long suffering, long sufferingness of God. Now, 
it is uh, now helping us for salvation for our salvation why because if god is now let us say upset with the uh, the sinfulness of each one of us then god would have destroyed the world long long ago because there is so much of sin especially in our last generation and look at our cities and towns they are worse than the cities of sodom and gomorrah and surrounding cities and towns surely they are worse today but god is showing his uh, now uh, outstanding character of long sufferingness because of which now the world is going on little longer in spite of the most wickedness manifesting in cities and towns even in the villages so that is helping other people to come to know jesus and be saved so that's a long sufferingness is definitely helping us uh, i know sometimes like uh, have a cook the prophet <laughs> we are asking that question at least in our mind and say how long god is going to spare this uh, people who do not obey him how long god is going to spare these people who are doing all sorts of uh, wicked things even in the church even in the church how long god will permit this uh, unfaithful people who are dominating in the church sometimes people say how long this corrupt people can continue in that area in that organization show sure. these questions are there but the long sufferingness definitely is helping us to have salvation for many others many others so that they can be saved but paul is uh, now uh, peter is uh, now explaining in uh, first peter or oh, this is second peter second peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 he is talking about paul brother paul according to the wisdom given to him he wrote to you uh, but in those epistles and what uh, he wrote some things are hard to understand which means even apostle peter had tough time to understand some of the writings which paul wrote which some of the concepts which paul wrote he had tough time so surely he is uh, kind of making a comparison saying the unstable people they can twist those things for their distraction for their distraction so now but one thing we need to clarify notice that is peter is not telling all things are hard to understand no some things are hard to understand as i said in the beginning every person every every believer male as well as female they have some challenging passages when they read the bible and uh, they seem now very hard for us uh, they are not able to grasp the meaning so uh, but i want to ask you that question are there some of such hard or uh, challenging passages in the bible where uh, you have some questions some doubts you want to know more i know each one of us have surely now some of us though we teach almost every day during the school year the word of god still we also confront there are many of such uh, texts many such passages in the bible some of those chapters in the bible yes we have challenge also to explain to understand so that we can teach them so but thank god in our generation this is our generation is the last generation we all uh, now know that uh, we have uh, many uh, privileges uh, many opportunities to learn god's word more clearly a number of commentaries are available online number of commentaries are available which were not there uh, now in abundance for the other generations i know though, some commentaries were uh, written and published but 
they are not uh, now uh, available to many people only uh, some university libraries some uh, people where they have uh, uh, more access to those uh, resources but today because of the technology they're online we can read and also even those who do not know the original languages hebrew or greek surely now uh, it is available now uh, again online online uh, for example myword.com m y s w o r d myword all one word eh? myword.com if you go to myword.com any text which you want to read in the bible any verse you want to read in the bible either old testament or new testament they will give you in original language and the transliteration how to pronounce it or uh, how the word appears uh, in uh, transliteration that means uh, in english spelling that hebrew word then they also give you the meaning of each word in english then they have english translation so that makes it easy easy for even those who do not uh, know uh, hebrew language and greek language even ordinary people can read because it's in the now transliteration then you can also see the meaning that really helps uh, many people to grasp the meaning uh, so uh, surely uh, now those hard texts what we call hard verses should not weaken our faith should not weaken our faith because now we come across uh, some of the what we can call discrepancies in the bible some of the discrepancies in the bible that is the differences what are some of the differences i know there are some differences now uh, we can understand them by studying with prayer and uh, meditation then reading some different sources so that it can help us for example if you read the account of matthew gospel of matthew and gospel of uh, mark and uh, if you read in the last chapter let us say mark uh, chapter 16 and matthew chapter 24 it says when mary magdalene and uh, mary the mother of james and other women other women they went to the sepulcher the tomb of jesus early in the morning on the first day of the week already the tomb was open then they they saw a young man with a white garments shining garments telling them why are you looking for jesus he is not here he is risen as i told you why are you looking jesus among the dead he is not here he is risen but if you read luke chapter 24 the first uh, six verses it says when they went the tomb was open then there appeared two young men in shining clothes two but now people who see some kind of uh, now discrepancy some kind of uh, now differences in the bible they say now which one to believe to believe the statement of luke in 24 that two young men shining clothes they appeared whereas matthew and mark say one who is right and who is wrong i know uh, these questions that trouble some people but possibly one thing sure matthew and mark reported one one angel like an young man like a young man and with a white dress and a long robe uh, so explains but who is the second one uh, as uh, luke reports and i know there are uh, some commenters who suggest by saying that maybe the second person maybe got the son who resurrected but it is early in the morning and uh, it is still semi dark so that's why they could not now recognize who is who in fact john chapter 
uh, verse uh, no chapter 20 John chapter 20 if you read that Mary Magdalene whom uh, who saw Jesus and she thought in that semi darkness that the one who appeared to her or who, the one whom she saw was the gardener and that's why she was pleading if you have taken the body of my Lord uh, please tell me where it is I will take it she could not recognize that it was Jesus then Jesus called her name Mary then she recognized his voice so so probably probably now an angel as well as God the Son must have appeared surely now uh, uh, some things which are there in the Bible we should not take it as a uh, something so uh, discrepancy or uh, some a problem rather we need to understand it may be little extra information for our edification likewise the possible reasons for such contradictions possible reasons for such contradictions we are told in second uh, timothy chapter 2 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10 to 15. I want you to refer to this passage. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10 to 15, which talks about uh, now he's telling that uh, now uh, when people suffer for God, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, now 10 uh, onwards, especially verse 12. If you suffer for Christ, then you are going to reign with God. But if you deny Jesus, Jesus also will deny you. If we deny Jesus, Jesus also will deny us. Then, verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. The workman need not to be ashamed. Which means, work hard. And now, surely the one who works hard need not to be ashamed. Likewise, if you have some challenging verse, spend little time, read. And now we have so much of a, a facility or so much of opportunity in our days. Suppose if you have some question, some doubt, maybe if you put on your Facebook, this is my doubt, this is my question. Is there someone who can offer some suggestion, some advice or some help to understand? Surely many people can now share their opinion with you. Share their opinion with you. That is available. On, on top of that, a number of commentaries are available online. We can read. But only thing is, spend some time and read, then we can find out. Then we can come to a good conclusion, a good understanding. So, as we said, no one has everything on, uh, 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 all the understanding in the world. No one has uh, all the understanding. Even Solomon, King Solomon in his uh, now full wisdom, he did not know everything on this earth. We are limited. Only God knows everything. Only God knows everything. So, that's why, surely, I know there are some scholars, they say, oh, there are some minor errors. There are minor errors. It's not because of the inspiration which made those errors. We believe in uh, the thought inspiration, not verbal inspiration. Verbal means God did not write the Bible. God did not write it. God did not write it word for word. Or God did not dictate it to Moses and uh, Joshua and all the other Bible writers. God did not dictate word for word. God gave the heavenly information in the form of uh, dreams and visions. Then the human being, whether it was Moses, whether it was uh, 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 Joshua, whether it was uh, Paul, whether it was Peter, they wrote according to their language ability. That's why when we read in the original, 
surely the scholars say it can be seen suppose you are reading the writings of paul the epistles of paul like romans or galatians or first corinthians second corinthians and on if you read uh, the letters like uh, peter first peter second peter and on and uh, john then the language is uh, they say so much uh, now clear in the sense paul being highly educated person in the new testament he used very high language very high language and also a very now thought provoking concepts he presented but whereas simple fisherman like uh, peter surely he presented the simple gospel and uh, now other details that's why sure we need to understand this important uh, now situation that's why it is not the error of the now holy spirit who inspired because the holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit it is not the uh, message which was given to them in the form of dreams and visions uh, mostly in the form of uh, dreams and visions it is not uh, anything wrong or error with uh, god but it is the human being who reported but on top of that we have another challenge the differences or the discrepancies which we notice is because of some of those who made the copies for example in the olden days no printing you know they have to write everything word for word with the hand so the one who wrote the original writer like moses like joshua like paul like peter fine or isaiah daniel they wrote then later when they want to make uh, more copies for others they say i would like to have a copy of this book book of isaiah book of daniel whatever then they needed to copy it then there were some faithful people who devoted or dedicated their life and their time just copying copying word for word this is human error human beings while copying sometimes maybe they left out a word or they wrote some other word extra which was not there this is human error because human beings tend to make such things that's why copies now brought some uh now small errors it's not a it's not going to make a big difference for our salvation no maybe a small error that's why because there is a small error or a, a minor mistake let us say we should not throw everything for example if you are relishing eating that nice tasty biryani <laughs> then uh, by chance if there is a small stone well you are uh, just enjoying that biryani a small stone was there a small one which you could not even uh, see while you are enjoying so along with that uh, now morsel of food and it went inside then it was under your teeth then what do you do do we say oh this has spoiled all of my now uh, eating uh, enjoying mood today maybe the rest of the whole uh, plate full of biryani nice smelling tasty also because already you tasted tasty biryani may be having so many small stones so i don't want to eat it i'll throw this one do we do that do we th throw because of one small stone which uh, accidentally now came into your mouth because it was there in that biryani we don't we try to now spit it out we uh, try to throw it. then carefully we eat and enjoy likewise yes there are some discrepancies there are some things which are there in the bible which may challenge us but surely we need not to or we should not throw everything out and say oh the whole bible is not reliable we should not come to that conclusion at all so that's why we need to understand this important aspect and also how to deal with difficulties with honesty with uh, now we need to uh, now tackle these things with honesty 
you need to have honesty and now carefully carefulness so you need to be honest and careful uh, so now uh, those uh, hard texts sometimes we call hard passages or uh, difficult passages then surely as we said we acknowledge yes we face and we come across and uh, so now uh, we need to if the people are asking and say oh uh, i have a challenge I, I i want to understand this one as a believer as somebody now little older to others as somebody now who is spending more time with god's word and prayer they may ask you and say now my brother my sister our uncle aunt can you explain this one to me some young people may turn to you or some believers who are just young in their christian experience uh, recently converted they may come to you to ask then what do you do how do we respond because what is hard for them what is challenging for them it may not be challenging to you so how to tackle it how to answer them we are told in proverbs chapter 2 verse 7 proverbs chapter 2 verse 7 and uh, he lays sound wisdom that means he grants sound wisdom uh, to the righteous that means if you have a daily relationship with god by reading his word and prayer life intense prayer life surely god grants his wisdom uh, for the righteous and he is the buckler which means the shield for the righteous so if you are honest then you can tell people you can tell people and uh, now for example uh, they may meet you in the church or some other place and say uncle uh, i am having a challenge with this uh, passage can you explain to me they may ask you or they may call you on the phone and ask you then what do you do so then we need to understand this one suppose as we said everyone has a limitation suppose you are not acquainted you are not uh, now having clear understanding of that one so you need not to bluff you need not to bluff or you need not to now mislead those people you should not mislead those people be honest and say okay my brother my sister or uh, dear uh, uh, give me a little time Le give me a little time i will uh, now make a little study on that and i'll get you back i will tell you sure be honest just because they ask you you are the senior most member or active member in the church or an elder of the church or uh, some uh, uh, theology professor and uh, so you need not to act as though you know everything and bluff something which is not there in that text honestly you say give me a little time i will get you back i will tell you so you can pray about that you can uh, make little study for yourself with some dictionaries and some commentaries and something online sure uh, humble ourselves so be honest so then you need to look at the context often many people forget to look at the context what is that context mean that uh, passage of the bible which is giving us a trouble or uh, some challenge then you can uh, Uh, read few verses before few verses later sometimes the whole chapter you can read in order to understand sometimes you need to read uh, a, a chapter or two uh, uh, prior to this then maybe sometimes if you is required you can also read to catch the whole now uh, now force of the now meaning the full meaning of that uh, uh, verse you need to go to the following verses or the following chapter also sometimes then you can have a better understanding that's why uh, looking at the context following the context can help us to understand that's why don't jump into hasty conclusion because somebody asked somebody asked we should not pretend as though we know everything if you don't know something 
be honest and say, uh, at present, I, uh, I don't know this one. I don't have much understanding on this one, much clarity on this one. So, but I'll make a study and let you now understand. So you can do that. That will be, now we are honest with ourselves. Uh, not uh, misleading others just by bluffing something or by saying something which is not in the text or in that verse. That's why don't give any hasty answer uh, for a passage which you yourself do not have clarity. Don't give a hasty answer. Because it's not a life and death matter. It's not a life and death matter. Take time to answer. And also, for example, Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 2. And it, uh, for example, Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, uh, a number of people ask this question and say, the sons of God married the daughters of men because they were fair to look upon. That means they were so beautiful. And some translations in English, they translate by saying, the angels married the daughters of men. Angels married. All that uh, now causing so much uh, now confusion in the minds of many people. Then they ask this question and say, do the angels marry? Which angels married? But if we go to the scriptures, if we go to the scriptures, then do the angels marry? Answer is no. What did Jesus say? Matthew chapter 22 verse 30. Matthew 22 verse 30. Angels do not marry. Which means definitely this translation has some problem, some uncertain meaning. Because angels do not marry, so the word angel should not be there. They don't marry. That's what Jesus said. And when we go to heaven, we'll be like angels, we, we will also not marry. No marriage is in heaven. So, surely God made it clear. Then, if you just only read it as it is in uh, Kingdom's Bible, KJV, saying, the now, sons of God, who are the sons of God? I know there are some people who may say, maybe people from the other worlds. But definitely, who are the sons of God? Sons of God are the ones who followed God and His uh, instructions and His commandments. Surely, they were the descendants of Seth. And uh, we are told in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, those who are led by the Spirit, that means the Holy Spirit, are the sons of God. That's why daughters of men are those who neglected to follow God, those who neglected to obey God, the descendants of Cain, Cain and his descendants. They neglected, they did not follow. So what happened in the, uh, 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 before flood, what we call uh, now the uh, people before, who lived before the flood, antediluvians, surely they married. That means though they were faithful, followed God because of, they were impressed by the beauty of Cain's descendants, daughters, and they married them. That brought, uh, again, a faithless generation. I know that is also uh, a problem in our uh, last generation, in our last days, in these last days. Uh, many people, because of uh, beauty, because of handsomeness, because of some good job and uh, because of some property, uh, they are uh, opting to marry a non-believer. Maybe for the sake of marriage, that person may take baptism. But later, the life becomes uh, so miserable and they deviate from the faith and the Lord. We have to be cautious. That's why surely uh, doing little uh, study on that text, that is Genesis chapter 6 verse 2, we can come to conclusion, it is not angels, it is not people from the other worlds. It was the sons of God are the faithful followers of God. But they made that mistake of marrying a faithless uh, generation or faithless uh, now persons. That's why surely some of these uh, now uh, passages which uh, may pose some challenge.
can be resolved if we study God's word with uh, now some time and uh, putting some time and energy to study. Then, uh, we, while we are dealing with this uh, now difficult passages, we need to be humble, humbling ourselves. Now, James chapter 4, verse 6 to 10, we are told, God resists the proud, but uh, gives his grace to the humble, which means we need to be humble. Don't be proud because of uh, our education, our doctoral degree, our position. We should not be proud, humbling ourselves. Especially when we deal with God's word, we need to humble ourselves and have a, uh, that teachable spirit, teachable spirit. Because now we are told, uh, James chapter 4 verse 8, if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. Only if we uh, seek the Lord and His uh, guidance, God will help us to understand. So humble means, it's not that uh, in uh, some churches, uh, people feel to sit on the floor, on that carpet or some mat, uh, they feel that they're humbling themselves. Okay, but here humbling experience is having the teachable spirit. How important you may be, how important responsibility you may have, or how many years you may be uh, teaching in uh, some theological uh, now seminary or in a theological uh, college or a university. But now you remember Nicodemus. Why did Nicodemus come uh, to Jesus in the night time? He did not want others to see him because he himself was a teacher of the law. So he felt shy, but thank God he went to Jesus to ask for how to be born again. He had a question, though he himself was the teacher of the law for his lifetime, a renowned teacher, yet he himself had a challenging uh, now uh, uh, question or a challenging now theological understanding. So he went to Jesus and he had a teachable spirit, though he felt shy to go in the daytime. And maybe whatever our position, whatever our uh, place in the community, in that church or in that society, we need not to feel shy to learn things from God, to learn uh, now, to learn the Bible from its uh, now truth. I know many times when we come to know the truth, but people do not change their now fixed mentality. Fixed mentality, they're not changing. They say, yes, uh, what you say is right, it is in the Bible, but they don't change. For example, baptism by immersion. I know there are many uh, churches in the world, they practice sprinkling. Major churches, sprinkling baptism. And, uh, or some churches, they make their members to walk under the flag. And they say, this is uh, now baptism. And some churches practice even child baptism. But now, when we read in the Bible, it is so clear that Jesus went into the water, took baptism. And uh, now, many other uh, now examples in the Bible. They went into the water and took baptism. But when we show that one, they say, yes, uh, what you say is right, as yes, Bible is telling like this. But they don't change. You see, they're not changing their uh, now mentality. If you ask them and say, no, Bible tells about this one, then why are you not uh, now accepting this one? Because you have taken uh, baptism by sprinkling. Then why not you take by baptism by immersion? They say, yes, I know this is a truth from the Bible, but uh, see, we are following this one from our forefathers, from our grandfather, great-grandfather. We are following this one. So just, just we want to continue in this one. So they don't want to change. They don't want to take a, a decision. That's why when we see some truth, we must now act on it. Then only it's going to be a blessing. Then... Uh, 
we need to also when you come to deal with the difficult passages we need to humble ourselves have the teachable spirit to learn even let us say from a humble person we are willing, we should be willing to learn teachable spirit and also we need to have patience we need to have patience we may not understand immediately that day it may take time galatians chapter 6 verse 9 we are told galatians chapter 6 verse 9 uh, do not be weary that means do not be now so much uh, troubled now uh, surely now do not be tired tired to learn god's word don't be tired to learn god's word take time spend some some time and uh, to learn and to find out i know there are uh, examples where people for example the wise men in the bible when they saw the star in the sky they went all the way traveling those days uh, they didn't have a modern uh, travel facility transportation modern transportation they had to go all the way maybe by donkey or a camel but they have to go all the way but for what just what the truth what they saw then they wanted to see and worship what the truth what they understood from numbers chapter 24 verse 17 the star shall come out of jacob after a long search they found this one and they made their journey all the way to go and they went and they found it took them long now days not one day not two days not one week several days had to travel so it needed a lot of patience to see the end of that truth what they found so surely now we need to spend time for example uh we know about uh, william miller william miller he was a army retired captain army captain retired and uh, doing his farming then uh, he came across not systematically studying just uh, he came across in daniel 8:14 unto 2300 days then the sanctuary shall be cleansed he did not understand what is the 2300 uh, days he asked a number of people nobody gave him a satisfactory answer then he made up his mind i want to make a study of this text i want to understand this one it took him two full years 1816 he began to read and understand read several sources and the history and it took him two full years 1818 he came to the conclusion 2300 days are 2300 years started in uh, starting point is uh, 457 bc is going to end somewhere in 1843 or 1844 that will be the end of the world but he had so much patience he did not give up sometimes we have some question when we are reading the bible i know many times the problem is we have a bible sometimes we have more than one translation of english bible uh, different english translations but we don't spend much time maybe we go to church once in a week then we carry the bible and bring it back these days people are not even willing to carry the bible they say i have my bible in my phone it's okay as long as you are reading it and using it many times the bible is there in the on the top of your bookshelf we are not uh, using it but here definitely reading is important understanding is important when you have some question some doubts and some challenging uh, 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 passage then don't give up spend time and read then you can come to that conclusion so that's why yes william miller uh, had so much patience studied that uh, one text for two full years and came to the conclusion came to the conclusion i know towards the end they jumped into a wrong conclusion fixing a date which they should not have done but definitely they spent time i know our early believers they spent sometimes whole night fasting and praying to understand some doctrine like a state of the dead some doctrine like millennium they spent whole night several times they spent that when uh, whole night all the believers together 
praying with fasting for understanding surely then god gives us then for example uh, there is a now always a, a challenging expression forever for example revelation chapter 14 verses uh, 9 and 10 and 11 says the wicked are going to burn in the fire forever and ever then that gives a very very frightening now uh, feeling for any person and say oh people are going to burn forever and ever and ever no ending to that then if God is uh, going to punish the wicked people for uh, the sin what they have done for maybe 60, 70 or 80 years in their life, then if God is going to keep them in the fire for eternity, that is forever and ever and ever and ever, no ending, then what kind of a loving God He is? Surely the question comes. But definitely as God's people, as God's people, if we do little study, in the Bible, then it gives us clarity, it gives us a clear understanding that that expression forever is not going to continue throughout the eternity. It is only for a time, especially dealing with human beings. For example, David says in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 4, 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 4, that's why to understand a, a passage which is giving us a challenge, a difficult uh, now passage in the Bible. We need to compare it with other passages in the Bible, other texts in the Bible. Then we can come to some conclusion. Maybe the best thing is on a given topic, if you can uh, put all the texts together or read them one after another. These days we have nice concordance Bibles available. You can read, for example, on the hellfire. Sure, when we read, then we can come to a nice uh, understanding a biblical understanding so first chronicles chapter 28 verse 4 david says god chose me as the king over israel to be the king forever to be the king forever then immediately question comes is david still alive is he still ruling in jerusalem answer is no he ruled only for about 40 years and in his old age he died before his death he anointed his son uh, king solomon and he died in his old age. But then, uh, but David says, God chose me as the king over Israel forever. Which means when it, the word forever, when it deals with human beings, it's only for a limited time, not uh, endless time. But when it is uh, dealing with heavenly aspects, surely. Now, that eternity is not going to end any time when we go to heaven. That is called eternal life. That's why that concept of forever is not, uh, that hellfire is not going to continue because all the wicked are going to be, including uh, 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 Lucifer, and all the evil angels will burn in the fire on this earth. Revelation chapter 20, verse 9 and 10. On this earth. This earth is going to be that hellfire. Then, after some time when they all burn and finish, become ash, turn to ash, God is going to create new heaven and new earth. If they are still burning, then where God is going to create a new earth? That's why God is not going to keep them burning for uh, endless ages of eternity. But definitely for a time, we are not told how many days or how many weeks or how many months. We are not told. But surely uh, they will burn and come to an end. They become ash. They are no more. That's why that concept of uh, hellfire forever is a very scary one. But if you, we compare with the other scriptures, other passages, then we can come to the uh, right understanding of the Bible, clear understanding from the Bible. Then, surely when you face such a difficult uh, passages in the Bible, we need to spend time praying, praying. Surely, now you pray, and compare with the scriptures. So then we'll come to the conclusion. Then we can come to the right conclusion. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. And uh, Paul was uh, telling, this is reported by uh, Luke. Luke was the one who wrote. But he says, the believers in Berea were more noble than the believers in Thessalonica. People in Thessalonica, what Paul told, yes, they listened, they believed, but 
the believers in uh, Berea, what did they do? They compared the scripture, what all Paul told. They read and compared. Then they came to the right uh, uh, understanding, more deeper understanding. But people at Thessalonica, they did not take time to go into the scripture and uh, make a study for themselves and read and find out what Paul told. But whatever Paul told, just they accepted. That's why he says, people in Berea, the believers, more noble because they spent time with God's word to understand. Then uh, Acts chapter 15, they had a problem uh, in Acts chapter 15, the Gentiles who accepted Jesus, should the men, the men, should they be also uh, forced to undergo circumcision along with baptism? Baptism and uh, circumcision. That problem was brought to now Peter and John and James and others in Jerusalem. Then what happened? They prayed, they spent time together in prayer and they read the scriptures and Acts chapter 15 and this happened in 49 AD in Jerusalem. Then this is first uh, the church council. Then uh, through prayer and uh, by reading the scripture and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But because when we depend on God and pray, the Holy Spirit will help us to understand by the leading of the Holy Spirit, they came to the right conclusion and said, let us not now compel the Gentiles to undergo circumcision. They need not to be circumcised. If they're baptized, that is enough. But only thing is, they should not indulge in now eating any flesh which is strangled to death. They should not indulge in idol worship. They should not indulge in now that uh, fornication. So they now set up some rules. So they came to the right understanding because of prayer and reading the Bible and depending on the uh, Holy Spirit. That's what, any time, any passage which we have a challenge or which a church is uh, going through some tough time because of, I know there are some churches, they are divided because of the uh, wrong understanding of one text sometimes. Some texts only, they have textual differences and some group believes, some group doesn't believe. Then they split into two churches. It happened in several places in the world. That should not happen to us in these last days. Any uh, passage is giving us some challenge, some tough time to understand. Let's pray about that. If needed a fasting prayer and read the following passages on the same subject, then came, come to right understanding, the Holy Spirit will guide us. And uh, so, but don't uh, interpret that one in the light of philosophy or tradition, but only in the light of the word of God. So that's why uh, definitely may the Lord bless each one of us. I know we are in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. And whatever the now questions we have, whatever the challenges we have on this earth, which we are not able to now come to a satisfactory answer. I know some people have some questions, some doubt, they ask several people, but they're not satisfied and say, nobody gave me a satisfactory answer for this question. They may say sometime. I know if such questions, if you don't get any satisfactory answer from anybody on this earth, I want to assure you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. Soon we will be going to heaven. Then. What all the doubts, what all the questions you have, surely Jesus will clarify them. Jesus will now uh, clear all of those questions. We will not have any more uh, doubts. In the sense, I know I have so many questions and uh, I want to ask the Lord. Surely I have personally. And uh, for example, Daniel knew that uh, anybody who prays next 30 days, they're going to be cast into the lion's den. But still, Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, Bible says, he was praying as usual three times a day, turning towards Jerusalem, kneeling. And he was thanking God. When you know that you are going to be cast into the lion's den to death, because if you are in the lion's den, you will be eaten by the lions. How can you thank God? How can you thank God? when your life is in risk? Surely I have that question. And surely I want to ask uh, 
Prophet Daniel himself when we meet him in the kingdom soon. So I know there are several uh, uh, questions and uh, I know uh, many times there are some uh, faithful believers, they are bedridden for uh, a long time. Often I, uh, 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 that question crosses my mind and say, why God is allowing this person to be bedridden? Why this person is uh, allowed by God to be bedridden for a long time? What is God's purpose for this person? And uh, I know people in their old age, they lost their uh, memory, loss of memory. And they can't even recognize their own children and their names. Again, the question comes in our mind and say, you know, what is the purpose for this person in that old age, not even remembering anything, not, can't even remember whether that person ate or not. You ask such people and say, Grandma, uh, what breakfast did you have? They say, no, I didn't have anything. Uh, though that person just, just ate only a few moments ago. Uh, I know such challenges. Then uh, we don't have really uh, answers on this earth now. The other side of the heaven, that is in heaven, surely throughout the eternity we'll have the wonderful time to learn from the lips of Jesus, our master, our savior, our creator. But whatever we can understand, surely by prayer and comparing the scripture, sure all of those difficult passages, we can understand, we can overcome, we can come to clear understanding by God's grace. May the Lord help each one of us to continue to trust in God and His word. Don't give up your faith because uh, you have some Bible passages which you cannot understand. I know there are people uh, who say, oh, Bible is not reliable. Bible has so many contradictions. Bible has so many errors. They say that. But uh, don't give in to that kind of uh, satanic uh, talk because Satan wants to discourage us not to read God's word. If we read God's word, will be said because Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the words which come from his mouth. If you read his word, will be saved. By, if you read his word, uh, by reading the, hearing the words of God, we will have faith. That is Romans chapter 10 verse 17. And if you have faith, we can please God. If you have faith, then we are saved. We are saved by his grace through faith. That is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. That's why faith is important. Faith comes by hearing God's word. But Satan is discouraging us not to hear God's word, not to read God's word because Satan is putting into our minds thinking that, oh, there are so many things added, so many errors, so many contradictions in the Bible, so much of discrepancy in the Bible. Let us not give in to that deception in the last days. Rather, submit ourselves and say, if you don't know something and say, Lord, I don't know this one, submit and pray and uh, humble yourself before the Lord. He will guide you and guide you into all truth. May the Lord bless each one of us so that we may have that blessed experience in the last days with the word of God. If it is your decision, join with me. I want to pray. I know we are here uh, today out. It's uh, sun is warm. That's why I'm sweating a little bit also here. May the Lord uh, continue to help us. I know for uh, some more time or uh, we don't uh, have many more days to uh, record outside now because it's a monsoon soon uh, rainy season will be at our door already it's uh, began to rain monsoon is just entered into this area and uh, so if the monsoon continues surely surely we have to do in indoors recording so that we can get the word to you so next week we are going to have the last lesson for this quarter i know this quarter we have challenging lessons mostly uh, they are uh, more beneficial to more scholars uh, it looks that way than the ordinary believers but still ordinary believers all of us also can glean some uh, wonderful things from these lessons and we'll meet you again uh, next week so that we will have the last lesson during the quarter then from July onwards, again, we'll have a different uh, set of lessons. 
again we'll uh, study them online let's pause for a prayer to conclude our lesson study loving father we want to thank you so much for your love and the grace thank you for being with us and sparing our lives so far continue to protect us and grant your peace bless all of us so that we will not be discouraged to read your word satan is discouraging us bringing doubt into our mind uh, many uh, discrepancies and many contradictions satan is putting into our mind let us not be discouraged but be encouraged by you so that we will continue to read your word and humble ourselves through prayer we can come to your feet to understand thank you lord for helping us to understand today and guide us throughout the week to come so that we can come to the last lesson next week in this quarter until that time let your peace and protection and blessing be upon us and our families especially as this virus is uh, now spreading more and more each day lord we fall at your feet for continual protection and your grace thank you lord for your great faithfulness in taking care of us continue to help us and bless us because i pray in jesus loving name amen god bless you my brothers and sisters and uh, continue to pray for us and this ministry and as usual tomorrow uh, i'm presenting a weekly uh, special message weekly presentation weekly sermon tomorrow also afternoon i will have one uh, we are going to have the uh, title is the last requirement to enter into heaven that is for tomorrow the last requirement to enter into heaven and uh, i'm also going to preach on zoom today one of our churches in south india in chennai city tambaram church in english so if you have any access you can follow us at uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow on zoom that is uh, in chennai city uh, tambaram church english church so pray for me and we'll pray for you we'll meet you again next time next week god be with you god bless you